Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this one we're going to look at how we can actually create and implement custom hand animations for VR in Unreal Engine. So you can see we're going to use, we're going to build a custom state machine which basically allows us to change our hand animation based on the object we pick up and we get the option to choose which animation to play. I'll leave a link in the description to a blog post that I wrote on my website which details the entire process in excruciating detail so hopefully this should be helpful if you need it but I'm going to cover it all now anyway in a YouTube video so what we're going to do is we're going to start by loading up Unreal Engine so in this one I'm just using the VR template standard stuff might as well all start from the same place and the first thing we need to do is make our hand animation or at least one that we can use so, so the first thing I'm going to do is go to content virtual reality mannequin I'm just going to open that menu for ease of use. And animations. What we're going to do here is we're going to pick one of these three hand poses that we have access to, to be our base essentially. So we're going to actually modify one of these to the position that we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the hand right open and I'm going to open that up and we're going to turn this into like a, a rock pose hand. So your middle and ring finger uh, touching your palm kind of thing. So to do that, I'm going to slow my camera speed down because it always goes everywhere. And then all we need to do is enable our bones. So if we go to character, bones, all hierarchy, we can actually see where our bones are. And after some clicking around on them, we can actually modify them. So we're going to do this and just rotate these around. If you're having difficulty selecting the bones and you feel comfortable enough to do so, you can actually go to character mesh and disable the mesh. And now you can select the bones much easier. So let's do that. And we need to bring the thumb in a little. And we'll bring it down as well. So if we put the mesh back on, we now have our rock pose. It's not perfect, but it'll do. You'll find now if you hit save, nothing actually happens. What we need to do is go to create asset, create an animation, and then create current pose. What this is going to do is it's going to ask us to save it in a folder. And I'm going to keep my naming conventions, which has already been used in the template. So that actually removes the skeleton from it. So it's just mannequin hand underscore right underscore and then let's call this rock so that's essentially what it is so now if i close this down you'll see we now have a new animation which we can use called rock that's exactly what we're after the next thing to do is add it to our grip enum so in content virtual reality blueprint blueprints we need to add all the animations we're going to use into this enum because we're going to use this to switch between them so I'm just going to do a new enum. I'm going to call this rock. We'll hit save and we'll close this down. Now is the fun part where we get to jump into our animation graph. So I'm going to go to my virtual reality and then mannequin. And in animations, we've got a right hand animation blueprint. This is where we're going to do all of our stuff, or at least most of it until we start doing our interactable. So we're just going to double click our right hand animation blueprint. And in here, I'm going to make some space. And the first thing we need to do is create a bool variable. And we're going to call this switch animation. I'm going to bring this in, do a get. And we're just going to set everything else up before we plug it all in. So we're going to do a right click. And now we need a state machine. If we just search state machine, you see it says add new state machine. I'm going to create this. And we need to rename this. And I'm going to call mine hand pause. So that's essentially what's going to store. We're going to put all our hand poses, our animations in here, and then we're going to call them when we need to. So the next thing we need is a blend. And if you type in blend, you get loads of options, but we need to scroll all the way to the top, roughly quite slow. And then under blends, the little heading, you've got a blend on its own. We just need this one. And we're going to plug them into so we're going to plug a into our right grip b into our hand pose 
and the animation pose into our output result. So it should look something like this. But you'll see our alpha or our blend is using an alpha. We can actually change this input to a bool. So we're basically going to switch between the ones that we're using. And so I don't forget what you also need to do if you don't want your animations to snap between each other. So you want a little bit of uh, you want essentially you want to blend between the animations and not have it just go like quickly between them. We need to change these blend in time and blend out times. I do these to 0.1. It just feels quite nice. It's a nice speed to do. And I'm also going to change the linear or the blend option to cubic. If you're not too sure which one you want to use, you can actually you can go to the drop down menu and do Control Alt over the top, and you'll be able to hover over them, and it'll show you how the timeline will work. So cubic does like an ease in and an ease out, which is exactly what we're after. And now, before we plug in the bool, we actually need to convert this to a knot. We're going to invert it. So I'm just going to do knot bool. And I'm going to plug that into our blend. So if we tidy this up a little bit and I'm going to comment this. What we now need to do is go to our animation blueprints event graph. And we need to add just a small little branch into here. So I'm going to hold B on the keyboard, branch. And then we need to plug the true output into grip. And we're going to plug our switch animation into this condition. Hit compile and save, which is what we want. Actually, while I'm here, I'm going to switch this animation just to true. So when we start the project, it'll be using the, the blend space. Uh, you see, once I compile it, we get some we get some warnings. This is just because we haven't set up any animations in our state machine. So we don't need to worry about this because we're going to do it now. So if we double click our hand pose, we're going to drag off entry. And we're going to do add state. And we're going to call this open because it's going to default back to our open animation. And in here, we just double click, we're going to drag in our open animation. So let's drag it from the right. So it'll be in your asset browser, hit compile, and then we can actually go back. You don't want to go to the event graph. You just want to go to hand pose. And now what we need to do is we need to make another state called rock. So the benefit of this is when we want a new animation, we just make a new state. We drag the pins to it and add it to our grip enum and we have new animations we can choose from. So we've got our rock state and you can see we've got, we've got a transition rule going from open to rock. We actually need another one going back from rock to open. So it essentially goes from open to rock and then rock to open. And in our open, so our open to rock, which is going from left to right, we're going to double click the circle and in here, we actually need to bring our grip state, which contains our hand animations, in. And we do get grip state. We're going to drag off that when we go equal. And we want equal enum. We don't want the byte because it won't work. We do equal enum. And we're going to connect that up. And we need to make sure this enum is equal to rock. So we're going to hit compile. That removes one of the errors. And then in the return value, so the one going from rock to open, we're going to double click that. We're going to get grip state, except this time we're going to do a not equal enum. And we're going to set that to rock as well. So we hit compile now. You see we've got our warnings have disappeared, but we do have our result. And that is because we haven't actually added an animation to our state yet. So we're just going to open it up and we're just going to go to rock. We're going to drag that animation in and we're going to hit compile. Now we've got rid of all our warnings and errors. And that's pretty much it for the time being in our animation blueprint. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to dock this window just because we might end up back in here later. And I'm going to do a save all, save what we've got. And now what we need to do is we actually need to make some changes in our, we actually need to make some changes in our motion controller. So we're going to actually open up our BP motion controller and in here, we're going to look for our update animation of hand section or commented and update the animation state of our hand mesh. And what we need to do here is create a new variable called override animation, because what's happening now is if we jump into the project and we press play, this animation fires on event tick. 
which means it fires faster than our state machine. So it won't actually change the animation. It'll just keep getting overridden by the default hand. So we're going to use a branch to actually change this. So we're going to do a set. And we're going to plug this set into our sequence and plug it into the branch. And we're actually going to use the attached actor. So we're going to drag this off and connect that up instead. We could connect this pin here and leave a pin, but I'm just going to plug that into the all just to keep it tidy. And then in our update the animation state of the hand mesh section, we're going to create a branch. We're going to plug our event into it. So we're going to plug our cast to right hand animation blueprint exec execute pin into the branch false channel going to the set grip state it needs to be the false because it, it won't work otherwise we're going to do override animation and we've got got that all set up so if we comment this so we're going to call this override hand and we'll just comment this set override hand because then at least we know where these two are talking at least we know where these are coming from so hit compile and save so i'm editing the video right now and it seems like the, this is going to be really long and i don't think it's going to be very comfortable to sit and watch all the way through because it's going to be about 40 odd minutes so what i'm going to do is i'm going to end the video here for part one and then we'll jump back in in part two and we'll look at creating custom components but for now stay safe and i'll see you then and i'll see you over in part two bye